Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about renal function and we'll look at some aspect of serum creatinine measurement and its limitation. When you're talking about renal failure, what you're really interested in measuring is functioning renal mass. And the reason you measure GFR is because this is the most common way to approximate to your functioning renal mass. Serum creatinine is one of the ways that you can get an estimation of this GFR. Now, functioning renal mass and GFR are not very well correlated, especially for GFR more than 60. And there are serious limitations for using creatinine to calculate GFR. So knowing how creatinine tells you about functional renal mass is important and you have to understand the nuances of it. Let's take an example to understand this further. If your patient creatinine increases from 1 to 1.2, it would be common to assume that the renal function is worsening. How is that condition where this may not stand true? Let's take another example. There's another patient with creatinine of 1. And if you look at the creatinine of both the patients, it would appear that the renal function is normal in both. However, when you calculate the GFR, the first patient has GFR of 114, while the other patient has GFR of 28. So it's really important to know how this creatinine helps you figure out GFR to make better judgment call for renal failure in your patients. If you look at this graph, the relationship between renal functional mass and GFR is not very good in early renal failure. And this is because kidneys can compensate the loss of renal mass by increasing their filtration rate via the nephron, which are still functioning. So that would tend to normalize the serum creatinine, even though you have lower functional renal mass. We know that the GFR is sum of filtration rate in each of the functioning nephron, and it's approximately equal to 100 to 125 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meters square body surface area. To measure GFR, you need a stable production rate of a compound, and this compound has to be 100% filtered and should neither be secreted, metabolized, or absorbed. If this condition is fulfilled, the amount filtered will be equal to amount excreted. The amount filtered will be equal to GFR multiplied by the plasma concentration, while amount excreted will be your urine volume multiplied by the urine concentration. And if you bring GFR on the left side, your GFR will be equal to your urine volume multiplied by the urine concentration divided by the plasma concentration. This is sometimes called clearance of that substance. Inulin is ideal to measure GFR because it is neither secreted, metabolized, or absorbed, and it's 100% filtered. However, this is usually used for research study in GFR as it is expensive, so it is not used routinely. What we use routinely is creatinine. If you remember, creatinine is derived from the muscle protein creatine and creatine phosphate. And there's a constant rate of production of creatinine by breakdown of creatine and phosphocreatine. So there are two ways to estimate GFR using creatinine. First is creatinine clearance, which we just talked about. The second is using spot serum creatinine, which we use on a daily basis. We'll talk about spot serum creatinine in our next lecture. But the ideal way to measure GFR is the creatinine clearance. The GFR estimates from spot serum creatinine are not very accurate, as you can see in this figure. The correlation between the creatinine clearance and spot serum creatinine is not very good. The reason we use creatinine to measure GFR is because it has got stable production rate, it is 100% filtered, and it's not metabolized or absorbed. However, around 10 to 20% of this is secreted organic anion transporter in PCT. Therefore, your urine concentration is higher. So using the creatinine by this method overestimates your GFR. Let's look at all the three variables to understand their limitation when you measure GFR by this method. Since the urination varies with time, 24-hour urine is usually used to average out the urine production to measure the GFR. However, there is a problem with incomplete urine collection. So let's see how to identify it so as not to make errors. Normal creatinine excretion, in male it's 28 minus A divided by 6 and in female it's 22 minus A divided by 9. Let's say we have a 30 year old 50 kilograms female and you measure plasma creatinine, urine creatinine and 24 hour urine volume. When you plug in these numbers you get creatinine clearance of 71 ml per minute. This is your GFR. 
So the question is, is this a good collection? The total creatinine excretion in this patient will be your urine creatinine multiplied by the urine volume, which gives you, in this case, 750 milligrams. So excretion in milligrams per kg of this patient is 750 divided by 50. That's equals to 15 milligram per kg. And if you look at the normal creatinine excretion in female of this age, that would approximate to 18.6 milligram per kg. So it would appear that some urine might have been lost in this patient and her GFR is possibly higher than 71. In situation with rapidly changing GFR, this method does not result in accurate values. Say for example, in 24 hours, your GFR drops and your GFR is shown in purple. If you measure 24 hour urine and average out the GFR, it will show that your average GFR is depicted by the red arrow. Your average GFR would be estimated higher than your real GFR if your renal function is worsening. You're possibly thinking that if you use a spot urine production and use it to calculate creatinine clearance at the moment, you might get more accurate answer. I will understand that the plasma creatinine does not equilibrate very rapidly in these situations, so your GFR estimation still will be inaccurate. So 24-hour urine collection is cumbersome, so it's not commonly used in hospital settings. Using spot serum creatinine is much easier. So let's look at the other variable in this equation, plasma creatinine. Let's see what are the limitations of this value when you estimate your GFR. This will also help you understand limitation of spot plasma creatinine as well. Jaffe's reaction is commonly used to measure plasma creatinine. This is a colorimetric method which uses picric acid, which combines with creatinine to form an orange product, which is absorbed at 520 nanometers. The amount of creatinine will be directly proportional to amount of light absorbed. However, this absorption can also happen with other compounds which react with picric acid like glucose, urea, uric acid, and proteins. There are quite a bit of non-creatinine chromosomes that interfere with this assay. For example, proteins, bilirubin, such as in case with cirrhosis. Substances with ketone groups also have absorption at this wavelength, and it can falsely overestimate creatinine in decay and patient with hyperglycemia. In normal person, the normal level of these compounds can overestimate the serum creatinine by 10 to 20%. So there are other ways to measure plasma creatinine and one of them is your enzymatic method. However, this also has some problems. When you use catecholamines, especially dopamine and dobutamine, you could underestimate serum creatinine up to 0.5 mg per dl. So check with your lab about which method they use before understanding the limitation of the measurement methods. There can be bias up to levels of 0.2 mg per dl in measurement of creatinine depending on the method used in your lab. So if you see a creatinine value of 1.5, in fact, you are looking at a range between 1.3 to 1.7 mg per dl. Because of this, don't rush in to make changes in your management plan because of small error in creatinine levels. Look at the clinical picture first. Next problem is increase tubular secretion as your GFR falls. As your GFR falls and your serum creatinine increase, the secretion by the old transporters will increase as well so as to normalize serum creatinine levels. As your GFR falls further, the body will upregulate these transporters and will tend to normalize serum creatinine. So in fact, at a GFR of 40 to 80 ml per minute, creatinine secretions can be 50% higher. So instead of usual 10 to 20% secretion, your secretion is now 35 to 40%. So GFR using creatinine clearance will be reported as normal in about 50% whose actual GFR is 60 to 70 and in about 25% with actual GFR between 50 to 60 ml per minute. There will be also false elevation if your creatinine secretion by oat in the PCT is inhibited by drugs like trimethoprim, cimetidine, etc. On the long term, kidneys develop compensatory hypertrophy and hyperfiltration and they will delay the drop in serum creatinine. So progressive disease will not always be associated with significant reduction in GFR early in the renal failure. In acute situation, rise and fall in glomerular capillary pressures will tend to maintain the GFR. So as your GFR falls, there are various processes in kidneys like autoregulation, tubular glomerular feedback, stimulation of renin angiotensin system, and stimulation of sympathetic nervous system, 
These will tend to vasoconstrict your efferent arterioles, thereby raising your filtration gradient and maintaining your GFR. There are alternative routes for degradation and elimination of creatinine, especially by bacterial creatininase that is present in the gut, and this can be abolished when you take antibiotics. Increased catabolic state, which is commonly seen in hospitalized patients with fever, sepsis, steroid use, etc., would increase level of creatinine, while volume resuscitation and IV fluid can result in dilution of serum creatinine. So sometimes serum creatinine can fool you in thinking that renal function is more normal if you are dealing with dilution, low catabolic state, increased tubular secretion, hypertrophy or hyperfiltration or sometimes serum creatinine can fool you in thinking that renal function is more abnormal as would be seen in increased catabolism, rhabdomyolysis, blocking of tubular secretion, blocking alternate routes of elimination and incomplete urine collection. So in fact, creatinine clearance just tells you the upper limit of renal function. So are there better ways to estimate GFR? Yes, you can certainly use inulin, but this test is not readily available, so it's used only for research purposes. Theoretically, you can use cimetidine to block oat by competitive inhibition. However, you need very high dose to completely stop secretion of creatinine in proximal convoluted tubule. So this method is usually not used. In an outpatient setting, understand that stable creatinine does not always reflect a stable disease. Look for the other signs of disease progression such as proteinuria, active urine sediments, and elevation in blood pressures. In summary, creatinine is a surrogate of GFR, which is a surrogate of functional renal mass. Creatinine clearance is a more accurate way of measuring GFR, though it's more cumbersome and takes time. Understand the factors affecting plasma creatinine. You can have errors in measurements. Figure out if your lab uses Jaffe's method or enzymatic method. Tubular secretion of creatinine, compensatory hypertrophy and hyperfiltration, and regulation of renal pressures and tubular flow will delay rise in creatinine. Other factors include altered rate of production of creatinine and dilution of creatinine from volume resuscitation. Now we know the issues with plasma creatinine and its limitation with GFR measurements. We'll talk about more commonly used spot plasma creatinine in our next lecture. These are the references. Thank you.